So welcome back, guys. Um, I've got Wayne Frederick here with us. Um, I know some of you guys have heard Wayne on our podcast before, but uh, we've actually had him come in. Uh, he's going to be speaking, presenting to us uh, some of the changes in the marketplace. So we wanted to bring him in and to talk to you guys about some of this stuff. So welcome again, Wayne. Good to be here. Yeah, man. Good to be here. Yeah. So um, quick question. Um some of the agents in our office have been really talking about how they're feeling stuck. Do you get that feeling out there? Uh, it's a nation, well, it's a nationwide phenomenon, right? Um, so, so when we look at the real estate market right now, uh, the presentation that I'm gonna be doing for you guys is just about the market that's changed. Are you ready, right? Are you ready for what's going on? And there's, is this thing is, is, become, is becoming more complex as we move along. So, I, I first put this presentation together back in February, all right? I'm now on version 7.0. Um, I did it two weeks ago in Minneapolis, and there's new data, there's new numbers, there's new things that have come out, and we had to, you know, to keep it timely, because that's what I was trying to do. And I think that is why people are feeling stuck, is just about the time they get it figured out and they think what's going, it changes again, mm -hmm. right? It, the, it's the speed of the change. Um, it's, it's not that we didn't know rates were going to go up. It's not that we didn't know the market was going to slow down. No one anticipated it happening with this kind of speed. So we're having to relearn in a lot of cases, and in some cases learn how to navigate this market that we're in, knowing full well that two months from now it could be completely different again. Um, and that's why, you know, right now, if you're out, if you're listening to this and you feel stuck as an agent, um, I think that that this is a defining moment, quite honestly, in the industry mm -hmm. that uh, we're going to see this thing split and and we're going to have agents that are trusted advisors. And then we're going to have other agents that their only way that they can see a pathway to it is to go discount. Hmm. So like from the market standpoint, you know, you're hearing inventory really starting to build back up. Um, are we shifting to the point where this is going to become a buyer's market again? Uh, no, we're not even close, right? I mean, when you have zero inventory and you then all of a sudden two houses get listed, well, they just increased 200, 2,000, 2 million percent, you know, however you want to look at it. Um, the numbers tell us, the stats tell us that we are still way underwater on inventory. Um, some of the stats I'll be sharing um, are that every um, group that tracks these things and tries to predict, right, they all are predicting double digit price increases this year. So is there more inventory? You bet. Um, a marketplace is deemed to be a seller's market when we have less than six months of inventory. Mm -hmm. We are just now to 3.1 months nationally. So we've got a lot more bandwidth to go before sellers are going to get in, before buyers are going to get in control. Now, buyers now have started to have a bit of control in the transaction, but it's really just time control. Mm -hmm. They have time now to think about it. They don't have to go in and, and make an offer in five minutes. Um, they have time to sleep on it or pray on it or whatever they need to do, right? And what, what I'm coaching all my clients on, my agent clients, is this. You need to make sure that your, your clients, whether they're buyers or sellers, they don't try to overplay their hand. It, buyers have a semblance of control right now. But if they overplay their hand, they're just going to make the seller mad. Because to, to, to kind of sum this up, buyers, some buyers think it's 2008 again. <laughs> like, I'm still in the market, and rates are up, and you're going to have to deal with me, and I'm going to cut a deal. So a lot of sellers still think it's last summer. Right. Right. And so when we as an agent trying to help people navigate through this, the main message is don't let your people overplay their hand. Hmm. Still a seller's market, still going to be a seller's market, my opinion, next two years. Yeah. What are some of the biggest changes you're seeing in this market currently? Um, it's consumer behavior. We just don't do things just and it's not just in real estate, we just don't do things the same way we used to do them. And, and there have been, oh, there's been a lot of third party influence on our business to where the third parties have spent a lot of money to get the consumer to come to them rather than going back to the agent. And 
it's, it's something that agents just as a group um, were so busy. I call it the perfect storm, right? We got so busy over the last two years just doing deals, reacting to phone calls, having to stop what we're doing, missing kids' ball games because the market had so much speed. And behind the scenes, you had these subtle plays going on to get people's attention. To me, it mirrors um, Amazon, hmm. Amazon Prime. Um, Amazon Prime has changed the way we buy product. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no doubt about it. And now, rather than it being an option for us, it's the first place we go. Mm -hmm. And I will admit it's the first place I go. My wife gets mad at me, but it's, it's just easier, right? Well, that's what the internet portals have done. That's the Zillows, the Trulias, and all, and the Opsities, and whatever. And they're taking that person, and they're monetizing that contact back to the agents. So is this going to eliminate the need for real estate agents? It is going to, in my opinion, <laughs> this is all my opinion, it's going to eliminate, is it going to eliminate the need for a real estate agent? Absolutely not. Is it going to, is it going to, and is it currently redefining the value proposition of a real estate agent? A hundred percent. And, and I always try, I always think one of the challenges with our industry is we tend to have real estate people talking to real estate people about real estate stuff. And what I've always tried to do is look at other industries. So if you think back, this already happened to the travel industry, to the legal industry, to the stock brokerage industry, to um, the insurance industry, where we used to go to our insurance guy, right? And all of a sudden now so many people buy it from Geico or, or Progressive, right? We used to always just call our attorney, but now if it's something simple, I can go to legal Zoom. Mm -hmm. We used to book hotels and, and flights and everything through a travel agent. Now you just go to one of the online portals. And we were insulated from this, but now it's here. And it requires, and, and it's gonna have the same pattern as the rest of those, right? Travel agents went away, but not the great travel agent. Stockbrokers went away, but not the great ones, not the, not the certified financial planners. That's what's, ha that's what's happening subtly behind the scenes in our industry. Yeah, I've always used the stockbroker analogy in this a lot as well, because you did see that. You saw the, the E-Trades and yep. the, the uh, TD Ameritrades and all these guys kind of pop up. I can do my own trades. I don't need a broker anymore. But yet the brokers were still there, yeah. um, and they're still there today doing their thing. And almost if you look at it, they're working with the clients they want to work with now. Right. They, they've upped their game to, to become certified financial planners, mm -hmm. right, to become wealth advisors. Um, and, and, you know, to me, back, way back in the day with a stockbroker, what was the one thing the stockbroker had that I didn't have? The stockbroker had access to Wall Street. Mm -hmm. They had a phone they could pick up and get to a trader right then and institute a trade. Well, in our world, that's Multilist. Yep. We had Multilist, and you couldn't get to Multilist without us. Well, then, you know, 15 years ago, here came syndication. Now you can get to Multilist without us. So now it's like, well, what's the value proposition? And that's the challenge that agents have. Yeah. It's like, what do I really bring to the table? And the public's going, I don't have to put up with agents who, who don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, personally, I think it's a very exciting time in the industry um, because, you know, I think when you poll realtors, they're all like, there's too many real estate agents. And it's going to take, it takes market forces like this to, to change the playing field. So, so we're going to see uh, a declining population in the real estate mm -hmm. agent base, uh, uh, assuming all this. Already seeing it. Yep, yep. Um, so what are some of your strategies you think real estate agents need to put in place to make sure they're not part of that declining population? So I've, I've, always, um, I've always, you know, realized for, for a number of years that there's, there's, there's three categories of real estate agent, right? And I call them pros, tweeners, and rookies. Mm -hmm. And the pros are the ones who are not chasing everything. They know exactly what they're doing, and they drive their business that way and their execution is flawless. Then you have tweeners who dabble in a lot of different stuff and they try a lot of things. That's most real estate agents, mm -hmm. right? And then you have rookies who are operating from fear. And I think the number, the number, if we just had to say, what's the one thing that an agent could do, turn pro? 
how do you turn pro? You, we're the only industry that I have studied that for some reason believes success comes from going wide versus going deep. Mm -hmm. If you look at any other, you look at athletics, you look at any other profession, the top earners specialize, right? So the, the, the brain surgeon, if you will, gets paid a lot more money than the general practitioner. The closer in baseball gets paid a lot more money than the utility infielder, although we could make the case the utility infielder has more skills because he can play every position, right. but he's not paid. The, you know, the closer works once every three days, has like two pitches, yeah. and gets paid exorbitant amounts of money. That's what a pro does. And when, 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 and, and it, it does not happen over time. It's a decision that people make. It's out there for everybody. Everybody can make the decision to turn pro. But that means you have to study. That means you have to practice. That means you have to mirror the elite athlete or the, the outstanding business person. And it's something that as an industry, quite honestly, we've never done. So the person that was in the gig economy that decided to become a real estate agent, get a license, and help their three friends on their street list their house or buy a house, right. th that's probably not going to be around much longer. Well, sadly, that'll probably always be around. Okay. I mean, that's that's uh, we saw this happen in, in 08 and 09. Um, when we had the opposite, you know, we had a real, they had a serious down. This, what we are in now, and, and I guess the message I want to make sure I deliver to everybody, this is not a downturn. Mm -hmm. This is just an elongation of time frames. And if you look at it that way, it becomes a bit simpler. Um, but in 2008 and 2009, when, when real estate led the economy down this horrible trail, the people that got out were the solid, producer doing a million and a half to five million, but it was their primary source of income. They exited the business. The, the top earner, you know, the guy doing 20, 30 million a year, they adjusted and they kept right on going. And the guy we never can get rid of in this business, the guy doing one or two deals a year. <laughs> they just kind of hang around. Um, so I, what I would tell people is if you are, if you right now are in that, and, and it's the one and a half to five million dollar people that are stuck. Okay. Right. They're the ones that are like, my stuff's not working like it did. Well, that's because of consumer behavior, because of the way we do things. So that redefines some of the leverage points that we have as an individual agent. Um, but you have to make the decision that I'm going to turn pro. And then when you do that, then you get clarity. And then once you have clarity, then we can design a business model around that of things you'll consistently do and then support people in that. And then their career takes off. Yeah. Let me ask you something. We talked a little bit about this last night um, about business models with agents. Yeah. Why is it, in your opinion, that it's rare to find a real estate agent that actually has a business model that they work off of? I, I, I think the reason is because the industry, whether we, whether we like it or not, the industry is driven by agent count. Uh, local board, state associations, NAR, or whatever. And, and as a result, we don't want, when agents come in, the model, I mean, I've been doing this 37 years, mm -hmm. right? The model 37 years ago was, hey, come join my company, call your friends, tell them you're a realtor, here's some business cards in a cubicle, good luck, see ya. Knowing they, they knew full well that, that the vast majority of people would wash out. And they didn't care because mm -hmm. they were bringing more people in. That really hadn't changed. And so if you're not introduced to business models in the beginning of your career, um, one of two things always happens with real estate agents when they first start out, right? So you go to real estate school. You're taught, quite honestly, in real estate school, unless North Carolina is a lot different than the rest of the country, you're taught stuff that you're never going to use, mm -hmm. ever. And you're not taught how to do business. And you get in, and one of two things always happens. You're told in real estate school at some point, hey, you're not going to make any money for six months. So people get in the business, and they don't make any money for six months, and they go, okay, I'm right on track. Here we go. It's going to yeah. kick in, and then it doesn't, and they exit the industry. Or people start out, and they hit the ground running. And then because they don't have a model, it doesn't work as well six, eight, 12, 15 months in, 
and then they, then they quit. And, and we're just not, because I think the reality is if we were sitting down with every person, if we had them go from a pre-licensed school and you had to go to a business school, specific business school regarding real estate, a lot of people would self-discover this gig ain't for me. But weirdly, we don't have that in the industry. And that's because we're a dues-driven industry. Hmm. And that's controversial, I know, for me to say that. But the world that I live in, and I operate with people all over the country, as you know, that seems to be the pattern. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's driven by dues. And, and if we, you know, the industry in and of itself, I don't know that the industry really wants a few people getting really good at this. The realtors in the field do. <laughs> The public does, but it's almost like, you know, like kind of what we have going on in politics right now. I mean, do y'all really care what we're dealing with out here in the field? So. Hmm. So go back to uh, some of the changing behavior that we have currently. Um, so we've seen this kind of shift from um, the old, well, let's call it the old way of doing business yeah. or the old way of, of consuming uh, the, the home or going through that, that process, buying the home. And now we're really focused more electronically, internet, this way. So what are some of the things that agents need to do to be able to capitalize on that? Um, number one, you need to understand it, right? They need to understand consumer behavior. Um, I refer to it as a scrolling society. Because of our phones, because of TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, you name it, we scroll, mm -hmm. right? We scroll a lot. And if something doesn't catch my attention immediately, I scroll on, right? This is clickbait. This is, you know, whatever you want to call it in that world. That has now, seems to me, it has transferred over to the way we go through life. Mm -hmm. So what you need to work on as an agent is if you, if you do not have the ability to differentiate yourself and show value at first contact, in other words, make me stop scrolling, I'll just keep moving on. And that is the opposite of what we were always told about in this business, mm -hmm. right? Where we were told, even, even as, 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 as recently as five years ago, you acquire the client and you drip on them mm -hmm. and you build a relationship over time. It doesn't work. It's almost like the importance of that elevator speech is even immensely important now. Uh, more important than it's ever been. Yeah. More important than it's ever been. And not only the speech, but the materials that go with it, the items of value. How do you show me? Because, you know, you, you, you go out and go out and go on the Internet and grab any list of, I don't know if it's called distrusted people or whatever. We're always up near the top, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's, you know, it's attorneys, it's car salesmen, it's realtors. And we, so because of that, they're kind of coming in on guard anyway. And you've got to differentiate yourself immediately mm -hmm. and we do it with scripts we do it with dialogues we do it with materials we do it with processes but it takes practice just like the elite athlete mm -hmm. right it takes working on one or two pitches endlessly as a closer the the amount of time that an elite athlete spends in practice versus on the playing field is astronomical and yet look at real estate mm -hmm. I got a license. I put my license with a broker. Go hold an open house this Sunday. So we've got a lot of agents that I would consider them um, receive. Let's call them receiving agents. They're not really doing a whole lot to go out and lead generate. Mm -hmm. They're just there receiving the leads. Okay. Right. And and we're gonna see this change. But what do you tell an agent who goes from literally doing? not much of anything, but receiving the leads, whether they're buying them, getting them from a team lead or whatever, to implementing this process of being more proactive and going out. So what I've always worked on with people for the last 20 odd years is helping them to design a business model that they will consistently implement, okay? Um, so when you, when you look at any business, not real, it's not real estate, just any business in general, and we look at the lead gener generation functions of any business, they fall into three buckets every time. You can have your business referred to you, right, by either people you know or people you've dealt with. Mm -hmm. If you don't have people referring you business, you can spend money to get people that you don't know to contact you. That in our world today would be purchase, purchase leads, right? It used to be Homes Magazine, newspaper ads, things like that. And if you don't have any money, 
then it's you having to go out and actively talk to people you do not know. That's a call center in every other endeavor, right? Every other business. And so we need to look at it first from that macro level of if you know a lot of people, well, I guarantee you we got a game plan that you'll be able to hit the ground running. If you don't know a lot of people, the next question is, you got any money? Because hmm. if you've got money, you can purchase the, the engagement with people. But if you don't know a lot of people and you don't have any money, are you predisposed, are you willing and able to go talk to people that you don't know? That's scripts and dialogues. And if it's no, 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 don't do this. Right. Just you're a great person, just wrong career, right? right? Go find something that, that resonates. And, and so to me, that is the importance of, you know, in the work that I do, that's the importance of the brokerage affiliation is that if your broker is not sitting down, I'd say this to anybody, listen to this. If you, if you don't sit down with your broker and your broker is not helping you design a model that's in harmony with who you are, you, and you really want to crush this at a high level, because we had massive success doing this with people, do you need to find a relationship where you can do that? I mean, it's just because, because it's, you're going to have to work harder in the next two to five years to maintain the people you already have. You're going to have to work harder to keep those people than in, the, in five to seven years ago you had to work to find new people. So you've talked, you've, you've mentioned this a lot. Why is it going to be so much harder to hold on to the people that you already have? Because as an industry, we've never stayed in contact with past clients. Hmm. Um, but in the previous iteration of what was going on, you were still doing a ton of referral business. You know, I, hear, I would hear agents say, oh, yeah, I just never know the beginning of the year. I never know how much I'm going to do. And people just keep calling. That's over. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, that's over. I had a, I had a, you know, Brian, it's interesting. I, when I was in, the, when I was running a brokerage in 2004, I did a presentation to my agents, and I entitled it "2005 and Beyond." And I was like, played futurist, right? I'm like, I think this is going to happen, and then that's going to happen, and then here we go. And I stumbled into this presentation about um, a year ago on my computer. And I started going through it, and I'm like, well, son of a gun. <laughs> Look at this. Here we are, right? And so we're not going back. So, you know, just, just seriously, if you're listening to this, think about stockbrokers. Go read about the demise of the stockbroker. Look at the insurance business. Look at travel. Look at all of these other industries. And they've all been rocked by the Internet. And it, and it required people that were going to hang in to up their game. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are. And it's exciting for people that want to get after it. There's a ton of opportunity. Yeah. So um, last thing, and yep. you may have already done it, but what would be, the, the, what would be the, the most important thing you'd like to lay in front of a real estate agent today, knowing this market that we're current in, currently in and, and what's going forward? Um, the, be the biggest long-term play is is definitely double down on past client systems. Um, the biggest short-term play, work on your dialogue. Mm. Because at the end of the day, that's what's gonna differentiate you with someone you don't know. And, and I know from my travels, real estate agents still to this day do not stay in contact with past clients. We, it, small business spends a disproportionate amount of time, energy, and effort trying to find new people instead of taking care of the people they got. Mm. And so I will sum this up by saying this, Real estate sales is not easy, but it's simple. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I frame it this way. Be good, be nice, and stay in touch. Be really good at what you do. Be really nice to everyone, including the agent on the other side that sometimes is making your life miserable, and stay in touch with people. And when you do that, the business just grows organically. Wisdom. That stuff is awesome, man. <laughs> I don't know how wise it is, but that's how I see the world. <laughs> Hey, Wayne, we appreciate it so much you being bet, on with us. Um, Wayne Frederick, everybody, with uh, See the Field Consulting. And do you want to leave everybody with the contact information, website, uh, anything? If anybody wants to, to go hit the website, it's just waynefrederick.com. And that's, there's, no a, there's no E in the middle of Frederick. It's just F-R-E-D-R-I-C-K. Um, uh, email is wayne at stfconsult.com. And we'll leave these links in the uh, show notes as yeah, well. that'd be but, great. That'd be yeah. great. Appreciate yeah, it, Wayne. You bet, man. Appreciate it. Thanks Take for care. the time. Yes, sir. See you.